Welcome everybody to another tutorial on SkySiv. Today I'm going to take you through an example of how we can build an event rigging structure and uh, determine what the loads are at the anchor points. So I've got a typical example here. Um, so it's just a simple flat plane um, event, event rigging structure. So you can see it's made up of truss members. In this case we're going to be using Euro trusses. Um, and you can see that there's anchor points where all these red numbers are. So we've got one, two, three, four. And in this particular example, we're actually checking whether or not um, the, the rigging supports at 11 or 12 are actually required. So we're going to build it with and without the, these um, anchor points and determine whether or not the structure is safe. Um, and we've also got some lighting loads here. So we've got 20 kilograms, 50 kilograms. So we're going to add a few of those as well just to show you um, how they apply to the structure. Okay, so we're going to start with adding nodes. So nodes are basically going to be the start and end of all of our members, also where all the rigging anchor points are as well. Um, and where, if you want to apply loads and things like that, you can apply them at the nodes. So based on that example, we're actually in metric. So I'll just change that to metric. Okay, and I'm just going to start by adding my node locations. So I'm getting these off the diagram but I've just written them down just to save a bit of time. Zero, zero. And what you can see is you can actually see that edge taking shape there. And I'm gonna actually transfer to my data sheet and just copy the nodes down and just changing them from here. And you'll see why that's easier. I can just click and drag there, do the same again and click and drag there. So I can add these nodes much quicker using the data sheet. And we can see once that's applied, I can see that my shape is my structure is now starting to take shape, and you can start to see the outlines of everything. Uh, next, I'm going to add nodes. Uh, sorry, my members, and I'm just going to add my members just by clicking and dragging through the nodes. So you want to connect each member between two nodes, but there is a shortcut that you can do. So I'll just show you in this particular case. I can actually cut through all my nodes there. So I'm going straight eight straight to seven there and across and so right now they're not connected properly but I'll show you there's a little shortcut that we can use so then I'll just go repair model and it's going to detect all those um, facts that they're not linked up correctly and it'll make that change for me so now I can see that each of my members are separated by nodes okay so once that's done I'm going to go ahead and assign sections to all these members. So right now they're just lines in space. So I want to add an actual section to them. So I'll go to sections and my builder. And I'm actually going to load from um, an existing database, um, which is the Eurotrust database. So you could build these in any way you want. You can make them square um, sections, whatever you like. But I'm going to build them out of, uh, we'll say, square trusses, FD34, if you're familiar with the Eurotrust catalog. And I'll submit that. So now I can see um, it's updated itself as being the Eurotrust section there, as section number two. Um, and I'm just going to change section number one as well. Um, that's got default section. I'm going to make that a I'll make that a heavy duty one just to show something a little bit different. Great. So now I can see any sections in black um, are defined as the um, heavy duty one and the, any sections in blue, which I haven't actually assigned yet, will be that light duty FD34. So I'm going to go ahead and just change these two sections to the light just to show you what that looks like. I can see they've changed blue. And also just to add something a little bit different, I'm just going to change these nodes uh, 4, 8 and 12. I'm just going to make them give them a bit of Y value so that way they're sticking up a little bit 4, 8 and 12 so it's sitting up a little bit just to make things a little bit different so you can see in this case I've gone a little bit off the plan but um, we've got two different sections here we've got the, the HD34 and the FD34 and we've also got a little bit of an incline on the upper end of that um, structure so next thing I want to do is actually add my supports so these are going to be the, re the anchor points or the reading points um, at all these node locations. Now, a little shortcut that I can use is actually in the node IDs, I can actually put all, and you'll see that they will all become highlighted, and that's where I'm gonna be adding my anchor points. Um, alternatively, I could go one dash three, and I'll show any 
nodes that cover that range. Um, but yeah, in this particular case, I'm going to go all. And I'm going to select a pin support. So pin support is the best, um, the best representation of that type of um, anchor point. So I hit apply there, and I'll see that I've added anchor points to everywhere. So I'll go back now, and now I'm just going to add a few um, point loads. So these are just going to be my, uh, if we go back to the drawing, all the lighting loads that we had here, you know, 20 kilograms, 50 kilograms, 20 kilograms there. So I'll add a couple there, um, and I'll add them along the, the length of the member. So I'm just going to hit member there. And I'll do it a few at a time. So I'll go member 2, member 13, and member 17. We'll add a point load across them, 50% of the way across the member. So this is just going to go in the mid-span of that member. And I'll do 20 kilograms, which is uh, 0.2 kilonewtons. So when I hit apply, you'll see that all three loads have been added at once. I won't go ahead and add all the loads. I'm just going to add those three for this particular case. Um, you could also add a, a distributed load. So maybe on that member 11 there, you can add a, a distributed load from say minus 0 0.2 to minus 0 0.4. And we'll do that offset by 25% at either end. So now we can see that that load's been added there, that distributed load across member 11. So with all that done, I'm ready to solve my structure and actually get the anchor points or the, the loads at the anchor points, the reactions. So I've run the analysis and my most important information I have here are my reactions. So particularly we're going to look at uh, the force in the Y, so we can actually we can probably turn some of these off and really look at what, what those anchor points are doing at each of those uh, locations. So we can see we've got a, a max at um, this node here of 0.4 kilonewtons uh, actually one right in the middle of 0.9 kilonewtons and um, this is where we can really go back and, and I want, maybe I want to change my support here I want to remove this at node 8 so if I go node 8 <clears throat> clear that row and clear the one at row 7 as well apply that, didn't like that so then 8 Okay, sorry. Just to remove that. So I can see they've been removed now. So eight and seven no longer have anchor points there. So now when I resolve, I can determine what the difference in the, the remaining of my anchor loads and, and where that load that force is distributed. So I look at my reactions now, I can see that that's gone up a little bit, but it's not really too alarming. And for the most part, the uh, the distribution of the forces have, has been quite equal along the outer edges. Um, you can make um, yeah comparisons like that along the way. At this point, I'll just save my job. And I'm going to take a screenshot as well. So this is going to be included in my report. So I'll say um, anchor case 2. And that'll save on my local drive as well as in my camera roll. And where that's really useful is um, if I'm going to go through and, and run an analysis report, um, I can, I'll just turn these off, but I can actually include that screenshot in my report itself. So we can see I've got my um, loads here, my forces, and my uh, free body diagram. And scrolling down, I can actually see all the uh, setup, the job setup, where the nodes are, where the members are, uh, supports and sections. And then I've got the screenshot of, of what my reactions are doing um, and whether or not that's safe for, for, um, for working with. So I can actually print this out. Um, if I'm on the enterprise account, I'll actually show my logo there. Um, so I can actually pass this on to an engineer or, or the conference uh, manager, whoever I need to, in order to um, ensure that the structure is safe. Um, that's pretty much it. That's the, the quickest way to analyze these um, anchor loads. There's, there's, much more, there's many more results that you can look at. So you could look at displacement and see how your structure is actually deflecting. I think that's a really uh, important metric to look at because you can sort of determine whether, you know, two mil over a six meter span, that's fairly reasonable and whether those loads are kind of acceptable and whether the structure is holding.
Uh, you can also open it up in the 3D renderer and really visualize what the structure looks in, like in 3D space. So we've got, um, you can put on deflection and your member results and actually have a look at, again, where, where the max deflection is and, and how that structure is deflecting in 3D space. So there you have it, that's the, um, the our tutorial on how to build a typical rigging structure and how to analyze or calculate the loads on those anchor points. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at support at skysiv.com. Otherwise, feel free to leave any feedback in the comments below. Thanks a lot.